So we are building an adaptive learning platform. Um, uh, at the core of this platform is a comprehensive early learning curriculum designed in conjunction with Stanford University. What's uh, unique about this platform is that it's learner-centric, so we can take uh, learning relevant data from a variety of informal and formal sources and map it to a learner model at the heart of the platform. But before we could actually go to market with this platform, uh, we needed to first prove that adaptive learning in fact improves outcomes for early learners. Um, so we built a product called Leo's Plan, which I'm going to demo for you. It's a series of interactive episodes where the learner is at the, the heart of the story and there are adaptive games and puzzles that um, propel the story forward. What's important here is that we're able to keep the learner at the learning edge so that the trajectory they're on with respect to learning is, is uh, optimized. Uh, more importantly is we are able to, uh, based on the learner model that we're creating, um, engage parents and other stakeholders with relevant information to further support their learner um, outside of tablet time and in tablet time. So with that, I'm going to jump to Leo's Pad to get a sense of, of what this product is. So Leo's Pad, it's a series of episodes. In episode one, Leonardo da Vinci, a kid Leo, is inviting the learner into his world, and it's Galileo, Galley's birthday. So we are going to jump into the story, shattering the fourth wall, and... Um, for Galileo. Galileo likes looking at the stars. Um, so this is a level one. You might see a learner dealing with simple shapes. Um, a level two, uh, or level three rather, same piece of the telescope, far more complicated pieces. Again, all based on the learner model that we're, we're developing. Um, as I mentioned, we're also engaging parents um, with very relevant and timely information for how to support their learner. Um, you can imagine uh, a lot of parents don't know what to do with respect to early learning and frankly don't understand how important zero to five is for the cognitive development of, of learners. We want to take the data model that we're building about that learner and layering on top of it a, a parent curriculum by which we can uh, engage parents. Um, there's a mobile app tied to it, um, there's an iPad app, and overall it's a comprehensive curriculum that is um, filling up um, as the learner progresses. Um, today, in the adaptive learning pl platform that we call ALP, there's Leo's pad um, generating data and uh, parents pad receiving data. We are also asking parents to be agents in the field for us with respect to how their learners are doing. That information also plugs in, um, so creating a richer understanding of who that learner is. Tomorrow, um, and we're actively in conversations with many of these folks, we are building um, an, a platform where um, a variety of partners can plug in. Um, we can, uh, for the most important, um, improve learner outcomes because we're engaging kids properly. We add uh, efficacy to the system. Today there's no accountability in terms of what works and what doesn't work in um, the digital learning space in particular. And, and third and most, I think for us most important is being able to make sure parents have the tools to support their learners. Uh, in the long term this will also feed into uh, the school system as well. And that's who we are. Awesome. Thanks, good afternoon. And uh, now we'll turn it over for questions uh, to our esteemed judges. 
Um, we'd love to hear a little bit about what your business model is. Right, so um, you can imagine with, sorry, the Leo's Pad Enrichment Program, which is in the market today, and um, a, a bigger version will be launched in September, um, we're actually charging a subscription to parents. They will sign up for this program, uh, where their learners are engaging with Leo's Pad, and the parents are engaging with Parents Pad, which we're going to be calling Mosaic. Um, um, the bigger business model um, is around the data platform. Uh, we are working with a couple partners here already where we'll be building the platform for them. And uh, this will be, interestingly enough, in a non-walled garden um, uh, setup so that regardless of where the learner goes, his profile uh, finds him, so they're engaged optimally wherever they are. And we will charge either uh, rev share on the adaptive learning subscription that, let's say, Sesame offers their customers or based on data that we receive and, and process. There are also value-added services around providing the engagement layer for parents. For example, Disney wants to engage their parents directly. Um, they don't want to use our parent app. Um, and then there's all sorts of analytics around what's working and what's not at the learner level. How do you think about um, go to market in a, in a crowded space where there's a lot of options as a parent? How do you differentiate yourself? Um, with respect to Leo's Pad, right? Um, well, we're um, luckily the product is um, doing phenomenally well in the market. Apple's a big supporter of us. Uh, John Legend will be doing a song for us. Um, we're getting um, Ellen to be our brand ambassador for the admission program in September. So distribution luckily hasn't been a challenge for us. Um, we've been able to break through. We have um, a lot of downloads and our active user base and engagement um, is, is frankly off the charts. So that hasn't been the challenge, we're, but we're, we're a big data company. We are about getting as much data as possible. And Leo's Pad is, primary, is the primary vehicle to prove that we are in fact able to develop a model of a learner and uh, improve outcomes as a result. Um, can you give a little more color on the, on the numbers in terms of downloads? I, I unfortunately downloads? can't on, on downloads, but um, we're typically in the top of the app store for the pre-K space. Um, and um, or engagement, or other things. engagement, yes. So you can imagine that um, the average preschool app keeps kids engaged for less, about two minutes and 30 seconds. Ours is over 10 minutes. Um, so we've been able to show um, significant uh, engagement, um, I think. But uh, what we're also, we, we measure is how are we improving outcomes? And we can look at a non-adaptive environment and an adaptive environment and show that outcomes are actually improving uh, in, at a greater pace. And can you, uh, can you talk a little bit about the methodology behind the adaptive learning? Because I think a lot of people in this space say that they're adaptive, but the actual chain of it adaptivity is a little bit more. Yeah, um, happy to. Um, one of the really, I'd say, differentiating aspects of our business is the partnership at Stanford, who is one of our um, key investors. My co-founder is a learning scientist from Stanford. And we have spent um, approximately three years building a psychometric framework um, based on a, 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 a Bayes net, where we are able to first um, figure out with very um, limited information about the learner um, develop a simple understanding of where they are. Based on that, we have a curriculum, again, designed with Stanford, where we um, uh, level up the learner based on a series of results we receive to understand, based on a specific learner and across millions of learners, what is the right next best question to ask. So that, um, not too easy, not too hard, but that they're, they're in that zone of proximal development. So. Um, without spending too much time on it, we have um, a team of nine PhDs working on the adaptive learning piece of this. Um, and again, Stanford professors, Stanford's put in almost $2 million. So it's, a, it's, it's really core to what we're offering. And that's why we're able to work with some of these kinds of partners. That's really cool. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So that's PJ from Cadaptive telling us about adaptive learning and education.